the Holy Spirit is extremely gentle. He's a, he is gentle. He doesn't grab you and throw you to the ground and say, you're going to do what's right. You're going to get up on that potter's wheel. Get up there. Now get up there. No, he doesn't do that. He doesn't grab you by your neck and the neck hold. Now get on the potter's wheel. He's got your arm behind. No, he doesn't do any of that. He says, oh, if I could just do that with you. Oh, he's just, he just so kind about the whole matter. Oh, house of Israel, can I not do this with, with you? Can I get you to get up on the wheel? Can I, can I reshape you and remold you? And, and can I, see, the, the, the part that we don't like about the, the, the part of the clay is that some parts of the clay, the lumpy parts have to be removed. We don't like stuff when it's removed to us. We don't like it when all of a sudden that thing we thought was us. See, there's some things that attach itself to you. It's not you. But just because it's been there for so long, you think it's you. Glory to God. I've seen people with huge tumors on their legs. Huge tumors. That tumor's been there forever. And after a while, they think that's them. No, that's something that's grown on you. That's something that's attached itself to you. And, you. and when you go to a doctor, the first thing the doctor's going to look at is say, I can fix that. Right. And, and they don't even know what they're talking about. They fix what? Right. That big tumor on your leg. Right. So understand, when, when, you, when you allow God to become the part of your life, and the, and the, the name of the message is he's the potter. Right. He is the potter. He's the one who brings change. But, but sometimes, many times, change Ooh. When I talk about change, it's not like, wow, this is great. I'm going to go through some change. No. Change can be extremely painful. Because something is being taken off of you that may have been there for a long time. And even though the Lord is gentle taking it off of you, it still hurts you have gotten accustomed to what that thing that has attached to you. And then also when you think about pottery, the next thing it adds to you, that God begins to add something to And we're back to exchange again. He takes some things out of the clay. And what would always happen to clay too is when they were molding and shaping out of the clay, what they would find is they would find a piece of rock had gotten into the clay. If you look real close in our lives, many times sin has crept into the clay. It's crept in. And see, we always think about the biggest sins. Oh, I'm so sick of hearing about the biggest sins all the time. Oh, we're always talking about fornication and adultery and, you know, and murder and all that stuff like that. But well, a lot of people don't murder. There's a lot of people who don't fornicate. There's a lot of people who don't commit adultery. But a lot of people are full of pride. Full of pride. And pride comes before a fall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I had to look into myself and I said, Lord God, are there areas of pride in there? How they crept into my clay. And then they sneak in. Pride is a sneaky thing. You don't even know you have it unless someone exposes it to you for you. Sometimes they say, you know that's really prideful. What? Me prideful? I'm never prideful. You you just got prideful when you said that. It creeps in the clay. So you you, you got two things already that happens to clay. First, some things are taken out. Then some things are added to. And the final test, when you've got it all looking the way it's supposed to, is time for some heat. Just when you think you finally got it together. I finally got it together now. Praise the Lord, everybody. God has been blessing me. And the Lord is stoking up the heat. Is it hot enough? Is it hot enough? We can put him in. You can't use it unless it's gone through heat. You are not usable until you've gone through heat. Oh, I know what I'm preaching about. I know what I'm preaching about. 
Oh, God called me to preach and, and pastor, and people were, were prophesying to me. I see you. There's a calling on your life. There's a call. You're going to preach one day. I said, yeah, right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and then when I, when I finally began, began to believe it, I, I said this, this to the Lord. I said, Lord, I said, how can I preach? I said, my life hasn't been like a whole lot of people's life. I'm not going to pretend my life was bad. I'm not going to pretend. That would be a lie against God. It would be a lie against God and a lie against my parents. My life was not bad. I had a real good, easy life. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I did. When I was 15, I was climbing trees. Just looking out at everything. I had the whole world in the palm of my hand. I had it going on. Just, just going through life, everything was going really good. You know, learn how to play guitar. And, oh, my God, I'm a star. I mean, everything was going really good. I mean, when my parents took me to Thailand. I'm living in Thailand. I come all the way through Europe with just me and my brother all by myself. Man, I got it going on. I'm 15 years old in Europe with my 17-year-old brother. Tell me if I have got it going on or not. I, I'm walking in prosperity. <laughs> but I knew something. I said, Lord, mm. I said, I won't be able to preach the way I need to preach because I, won't, I don't have compassion for people who have gone through stuff. Oh, you, 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 you have. <laughs> you have to be honest with yourself and say, you know, I, I haven't been through nothing. So I don't have long suffering with people. I don't have patience with people because, Lord God, I haven't been through nothing. And the Lord says, just get, get ready. Just get ready. I'm, oh, we're stoking the fire right now. I'm, I'm, it's, it's almost hot enough. About right after that, that's when the door of the oven got opened up. And the Lord said, I'm going to send you in here for about nine years. And my, if I just keep you in there for about nine years, you'll be cooked just right. Amen. Everything that could go wrong began to go wrong. I, I, I went into all kinds of stuff. Not, not all kinds of, it wasn't sin stuff. It was just stuff happened. Don't you know that things just happen? They just happen. All of a sudden, this person gets sick, and that person gets sick. Your job is acting crazy, and, and, and this is going on wrong. This is going on. Every the, the church has lost its mind and gone crazy. But I, but I didn't understand something. I that the God was making me again. <laughs> 